I just wanted to say that it was uh, the pandemic. Our schools were closed. Uh, colleges were closed, but learning did not stop. And we said, why should we stop? And so we started thinking, what could we do? And we were very fortunate that the genesis of the journey of a formation of Atlas Skill Tech University really began in February 2020 when I was invited to be on the skills committee of the government of Maharashtra. The final guidelines took exactly another year for the formation of Skills Private University, after which the Atlas leadership team moved very speedily to navigate our candidature through the labyrinth of the state bureaucracy, mantralaya bureaucracy, and I'm happy to say the first private skills state university was set up. Midway in our journey, Providence brought Ronnie Skruvala and us together, an upgrad joined hands to create the university of the future. On 5th July, the landmark enactment during the pandemic by the Maharashtra government gave birth to India's first skill tech university. Let's look at the legislative assembly. university <laughs> हे आपण निर्माण करतोय आणि हे सेल्फ फायनान्स युनिव्हर्सिटी राहणार आहे प्रस्ताव असा आहे की महाराष्ट्र विधानसभेने संमत केलेले वीस एकवीस ते वीस सगळी क्रमांक अठरा स्किल किटेक विद्यापीठ विधेयक विचारात घ्यावे प्रश्न असा आहे की महाराष्ट्र विधानसभेने संमत केलेले वीस एकवीस ते वीस सगळी क्रमांक पंधरा अठरा स्किल टेक विद्यापीठ विधेयक विचारात घ्यावे काही अनुकूल असतील त्यांनी होय म्हणावे प्रतिकूल असतील त्यांनी नाही म्हणावे होयचे बहुमत आहे होयचे बहुमत आहे विधेयक विचारात घेण्यात आले आता विधेयक खंडशा विचारात घेण्यात येईल सो The landmark decision was made, and on 4th August, we received the notification of the governor of Maharashtra, who personally called up to congratulate us for setting up India's first skill tech university. And in a short period of seven months, unheard of for any formation of a university, and thanks to the government of Maharashtra, to the bureaucracy, to our team, that on August 15th, the university was inaugurated by none other than the minister himself. Let's go next and let's go next and see that our vision was to bring in the leaders of the future equipped with skills of tomorrow. And of course, what is a skill tech university? Everybody would ask me. So here it is, very simple. It is where a core discipline is taught with technological in interventions and increasing the skills of a person. So it's skill tech is a progressive concept, an amalgamation of body of knowledge, skills and technology, and focused on delivering skills-led education. And these are new age skills education. Now, this is where I would like all of you to pay attention. We have five colleges or schools as they are called under the university. ISD, which was a design school, is still continuing and becomes one of our prime schools at the university. And it offers now a degree, which is Bachelor in Design and even a Bachelor of Vocation. The School of Management and Entrepreneurship gives that very popular BBA 
And it's not just in management, it's in entrepreneurship, which is the future. And it also will be giving a BWOC in financial technologies. And there is an MBA, School of Media, more exciting. It gives a BA honors in new media, a BWOC in e-commerce, and of course the MBA carries on. And School of Film and VFX, BA honors in film production, and BWOC in animation. And now we will soon go into artificial intelligence, machine learning, the School of Digital Technology will start uh, next year. We are located in, as you all know, in BKC. And this of course is the commercial center of, of the city, which itself is the commercial center of, of the country. And these are the companies that surround us because we are a campus within corporates. I was being given land in many, many places, but I wanted to be in urban in Mumbai. We wanted to be first urban university and we wanted to be surrounded by the corporates so that my students, when they graduate, they just cross the road to join any of these companies that are there and every sector is there. And we were very fortunate to find an exclusive campus with us, which has an open amphitheater, has sporting facilities, outdoor hangouts, learning studios, auditoriums, seminar halls, digital labs, prototyping labs, maker spaces, experiential. Uh, and to, so that the students can feel, and you know the cafe, that is the one that attracts them the most. And so it's all ready for them to go. And this is how our classes are, where we bring uh, boardrooms, you know, we bring board members to classrooms. People take classrooms to boardrooms. We are very fortunate. And soon the Rotarians will also come and speak to my students. And of course, this is very important to see. Our academic approach is very, very different from the normal approach. Students are at the center, student experiences, student centricity. I remember Dr. Manmohan saying in 1996, in just one sentence had said to me, quality will come to education when students demand it. But are we allowing our students to demand it? Are we listening to our students? Yes, we are because all our curriculum is co-created with the students. The students sit on a board of studies. It's not just faculty, not just industry, but students join hands. And they decide their electives. They decide their experiential labs. And of course, more than that, we have support from capstones, apprenticeships, internships, and I would also request Rotarians to please come forward with internships and observerships for our young students so that they can get experience very early in life so that they can understand the practical approach. And of course, most important thing is we have to see that there is a social impact. And therefore, before I go ahead, here are three young students who are going to tell you that they joined the design school and Nidish joined the management school and she joined the film school. But look at the opportunities now that they have because we are an interdisciplinary school and they can do design plus plus, management plus plus, film plus plus. Today is in the world about being a generalist than more than being a specialist. So let's see what these young people have to say. Hello, my name is Soham Gangudi. I'm a first design student at La Skill Tech University. I'm looking forward to a specialization in communication design. I chose Stock Market Essentials as my cross-disciplinary elective since it was a lucrative chance to learn these essential common skills from industry-level experts. Since as a society, we are so financially literate that learning these crucial things early hand can lead to a stable and fruitful future. I've already learned so much and I can't wait to learn more. A design student doing stock markets, right? 
where would he have got this opportunity right Hi, okay I'm let's currently a first year at atlas skill tech studying in the school of film and animation although i'm studying film production i've always been curious about investing and that's where atlas's multidisciplinary structure helped me by offering over 25 different electives from across the four schools of design management communication and film so now i can freely study about the stock market and explore it while pursuing my creative career at the same time so thank you atlas for making this possible again a film school kid who's going to be a stock investor all right hello everyone my name is nidesh kakar i'm a third year student studying business management and entrepreneurship i'm doing my majors in marketing and entrepreneurship but i had the opportunity of doing my electives in design thinking and digital technology so that's it that just wanted to give you that that little uh, exposure of what the students are doing and this is where we are listening to them because they want to be uh, multi disciplinary transdisciplinary we're very fortunate that we are also co-creating our curriculum with leading universities the design school is in partnership with parsons um and we 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 are very fortunate that parsons has continued being our our curriculum coordinator uh vancouver film school one of the leading schools in the world has joined hands for our film and animation this is not an acting school this is a film production school and which is got the highest future king's college london london school of economics columbia university and berkeley have all joined hands with us for for programs and and international linkages and our first cohort that came in 913 students we are happy to say that there is true diversity i did not see this diversity in hr college because mostly it would be people from mumbai today i am experiencing this and i cannot tell you how amazing it is to have yes we've got 50% from maharashtra but we've got uh the rest of the 50% from 22 states of india i never thought i would get somebody from meghalaya i never thought i would be able to attract students from jammu and kashmir and it is amazing to see these students around us and and the diversity and and the intellectual capital they bring in is is really amazing and i must say it's a lesson for my maharashtra students because they've never stepped out of their states and they would not know what's happening around the world all right uh, let's go ahead and um this is what i want to really introduce you to welcome to the atlas metaverse this is what the students journey is going to be today being in the digital world and as we know uh, that the budget has also said that they want to set up a digital university with hub and spokes we have already started it and and it is there can you imagine the journey of a student uh, through blockchain and going let's go back to metaverse for a minute going through blockchain smartphone automation artificial intelligence augmented reality and it virtual reality e-commerce has moved to now virtual commerce so students better be prepared and they come and tell me i'm buying my clothes through oculus are you going to teach me through an oculus yes we are because we co-create our curriculum and so uh ladies and gentlemen here is what the gen z's message to you leaders is we have heard them we as a university have heard them but look look what they have to see stop talking about profits and making profits find out more about eco friendly ways of doing things and the companies exist for money they should balance and they talk about the poor and your action should be based on people that run the companies first and foremost they are people conscious and of course encourage and uplift minorities and the youth they are the future 
This is my Gen Z, ladies and gentlemen, and I present it to you. If And their motto is, if you can dream it, you can do it. Thank you so much for inviting me here. Uh, Shanaz, would you unmute yourself, please? I think she can't. Yes. Thank no, you. Can't. Thank you so much, Indu. You can't imagine. I want to be Gen Z now. It's so <laughs> exciting to see the kind of curriculum you have and uh, the universities that you're using for your curriculum, co-creating your curriculum. Very, very exciting. And your metaphors is really cutting edge. So congratulations. This is very exciting time. I just had a question. Um, how do you choose your uh, students? Are they based on some kind of academic performance or, or so, and you know, the cost, etc. How does how does this work? So, uh, you know, uh, we actually look at uh, uh, we, we first definitely look at the academics, but academics is not the only thing the way we looked at it uh, in uh, uh, HR college, because HR college, if you had the performances, then you, you would, I mean, if you 90%, 95%, 96%, then you would be in, 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 in. But if you did not have it, you could not get it. Here, we've changed it. We have our own challenge. We have an ISD challenge, ISMI challenge. We have our own little aptitude test, which is very, very simple and which is general, you know, it, it, it should be something that one is able to do it very simply. Your academics, your test, plus your other achievements, if there have been. So it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting way. And our, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but I'm, you know, today, we are struggling with how do we cope with the numbers who are applying to us. Today, we've got 3,000 applications for 2023 already, you know, and, and uh, we have started the tests and so on. And of course, our, our pricing is higher than the uh, uh, normal colleges because they are subsidized by the government, but it is not higher than... Uh, generally other colleges, private institutions, in fact, lower to a strong extent, uh, to a, uh, extent, but we do a lot of scholarships. We do scholarships for army armed forces. We do scholarships for educators and of course, for, the, for those who cannot afford it. And you have many companies supporting and sponsoring you? Um, Corporation? In the sense... Uh, not as scholarships, but there are a lot of companies who are helping us with, yes, some of them do give scholarships also, like Bajaj Electricals has given scholarships to our students, but we have normally companies are helping us with our curriculum, with Industry Connect, with our students' internships, with our placements, with have setting up centers in our organization. Center of Innovation has been set up. Center of Research has been set up. Center of uh, Digital Marketing has been set up. And these have been set up by different companies. Like Colgate is working with us on this digital marketing and getting insights of young students firsthand. It's amazing, really amazing. So now can we go to um, the questions that are there? Uh, let me see. I don't see any questions on the chat. Who? I can go ahead and ask a question, Shani. Yeah, while Dushant? Collect. Please, please yes. Go ahead. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Oh, madam, how are you? Uh, it is uh, really a pleasure that I've seen you in Sydney College, uh, uh, and then my son has seen you in HR, and now you're doing a Gen Z. In, it's <laughs> fantastic. I think you are probably taking care of uh, three generations uh, <laughs> in your very lifetime. And, and when you looked at your physical uh, university to Metaverse, my God, you've taken the latest on the platter. 
and this is fantastic and we are all very keen to see and visit your campus and uh, we, we we take your offer we every one of us will come and give a lecture whenever you uh, or give an information whenever required the question which i have a uh, uh, simple is that uh, now how did you manage in the very first year to attract students from all over india which is itself an achievement uh, which is no less an achievement apart from of course uh, agreeing with the government to make, make make agree to setting up a private university of course but then this is itself is a uh, if you can little throw light on that thank you so um, we did have uh, a reputation of our design school and our management school for last 7 years although they were not degree granting and they were not university our school of design was almost number 3 after uh, nid iit and nift so um you know we did have that reputation and also our admissions team travels i mean they are they are one day at work the rest of the days 364 days they are traveling and i tell them to go to schools that would never get an opportunity to come to an education like this so so they do travel we just we, we you know we are very fortunate with our admissions teams Thank you, congratulations. Thank you. Satyan, yeah. you have a question? Yeah, Shani, thanks. Uh, Ma'am, Ma'am is really inspiring as always. And uh, really the embodiment of diversity, the way you have the curriculum uh, so spread out as well as the students. I have a very basic question that uh, if somebody is doing IB today, then he does the IB DP. Is that, uh, can he go into the Atlas Skill Tech University or he has to go abroad? I mean, how does it work? absolutely yes to is we started the atlas skill tech university i i brought ib to india i don't know how many of you know that but i brought ib to india and i used to always wish that i would be able to create an ib of higher education and today i have succeeded in doing that and i welcome ib students and they are very happy here rather than going to conventional colleges because then they you know there is quite a misfit over there so yes the ib is to in fact i always say if it is skill india if it is make in india why not study in india and why can't we create world class institutions in india and why should our students always go abroad i feel undergraduate should be here postgraduate you can look at international uh, opportunities keep the brains in india <laughs> so Uh, Ashish, you have a question. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Shani, for setting up such a wonderful university, a much, much needed for our times. I have a slightly different question. So, at at my hospital and my department, we have a very large internship program, and we see you know thirty, forty young young students come through every year. I have found that as generations are going by, there's a huge sense of entitlement in a lot of the students that come. And while they have, you know, lots of fabulous skills and all of the things you said, do you do you find that? Do you have? I mean, you're far more experienced than me than I am. Have you seen that? And and I'm just going to say that, you know, it takes us time to move them away from that sense of entitlement. But I always say that, look, who gave them that? Parents, right? so now now you leave leaving it on our shoulders the educator's shoulders to move that away but you know i i i i had i have one philosophy and maybe this is something that helped me when my son was very young and he was so entitled because we had a car and we had servants and so on uh, you know my, i would tell my mother my gosh is he ever going to work is he ever going to care is he ever going to do this and my mother used to say you cannot change the content these children are born entitled so they cannot change the content change the context and i just moved the context away to say that every birthday we will celebrate with the the uh, you know with uh, the blind school or something like that you know the same way it's it it just takes a little bit to move them away because they are so smart now look at the rotractors right it's it's not just the rotractors hundreds of my students are doing different things hundreds of yes they come with that sense of entitlement it takes time we have to have patience but we the minute you flip them 
then you just wait and see. Thank you. Then they do much better than millennials. That's wonderful to hear. Because they have that spirit. Thank you. Xerxes, you had a question? You're on mute. I'm sorry. Uh, Impu, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. You've always been talking for the last one hour about uh, <clears throat> the Z generation. What about some of us who want to still stay in contact with what's going on? Do Please. you have something for us? Yes, How do we yes, do it? Please. Because we would be lost in a short while, depending course, upon how fast this is running through. Uh, tell me when how do we if stay you in like, touch? Tell me, tell me when I would do a special class for the Rotarians every Saturday or one Saturday a month or something where we can introduce the newer concepts to you. And I'm very happy to do that because we believe in lifelong learning. We are, our alumni are coming back just, just three years gone. They are coming back because they never heard of the metaverse, right? So they are coming back and they are learning. If you saw fashion going through metaverse, you would, it's unbelievable if you sit through that lecture. You sit through a prototyping lecture, you cannot believe it. So I'm ready to do it. I'm happy to do it. And we will be doing it. Initially, what I can only do it like as when the request comes. But after that, we're going to make it a part of lifelong learning as a part of certificate programs so that people can come and join anyone who can come. But now, Sharnaz, this is my offer. Anytime, any one day that you all would like, all Rotarians would like to come, we could do some of the newer concepts. We could actually, I would start myself with things that I've learned, which I never knew. How exciting, Hindu. We'd love to join. I mean, a lot of us, you know, AI, it's really difficult to understand how AI works today, but it has such amazing, um, you know, applications. So, and yes, to drive the car with an Oculus, right? Yeah. You're going to, you can drive, drive the, the best car in the world and maneuver amazing. it. So, and sure, you can be a part of the racing god. <laughs> Xerxes, okay. you really brought up a very interesting as topic, and I'm sure a lot of Rotarians would love to join. So I'll tell you, <clears throat> I'll tell you what brought it on. I was just watching the budget speeches, and uh, Sitaraman was talking about blockchain and metaverse, and these guys were clapping their desks. I wonder how many of them even have heard about the word. Yeah. So let's just start. And Good. So I think we can now wind up if it's time. Yes, yes, Indu. I think we've answered, you. you've answered all our questions. And we are really amazed with everything you've done. Um, Akshay, would you like to give a vote of thanks, please? So just before you say that, I'm available. I'm at BKC. Uh, I'm at Equinox. Uh, I can always send the address on, on, on this and send it to all of you. You're most welcome. Shenaz, if you want to organize a program at, at, at our uh, place, your so many Rotary clubs have already done it. So, you know, they, they did uh, MUN over here. They've done uh, uh, the Rotary Club of Peer has worked over here and done things. So you're most welcome to you. You, use the facilities and most welcome for the lectures whenever you would like some, some of these sessions. And my email address is still the same, indushani at gmail.com for all of you. Please do connect whenever you'd like to. Thank and you see so you, much, see, see you soon in the next meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Hindu. Akshay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shani. What a pleasure it was to hear you today. I think uh, President Shenaz, uh, with her comment of, you know, whether she can come and join the university, said it all. <laughs> And perhaps we could have uh, labeled this talk Rotary Goes Back to School because all of us are certainly going to be coming knocking at your door to, to learn so much more. And what's most amazing to me particularly is that, you know, it's almost we've heard of all these things in, in sci-fi movies growing up, learning through Oculus and actually seeing all these virtual reality things. And I'm so pleased that children of India will get an opportunity to actually learn this way, which will be at par with any university abroad. So kudos to you for doing that. Uh, as a token of appreciation for the afternoon uh, you've spent with us in our own small way, we will plant 10 fruit bearing trees at Nilmati Dandwal Gram Panchayat in your name and send the certificate to you shortly. And we hope that that will give the villagers of that region uh, not only shade, but fruiting trees as well for future. 